So I get this data set every week and all it is is a list of projects and then the project sales margin rate and then some project metrics down here at the end in yellow. And what I do is I drive several pivot tables down the bottom. So about 10 to 12 pivot tables every week. But every week the size of this data will change. So I could have more or less lines every week. So what I tend to find myself having to do is to go into each of the pivot tables, go into pivot table analyze, change data source and having to effectively change the row type to the new data that I've got. So adding or subtracting new rows. So a better way to do this is a three step approach. So step one is to set up a named range. Step two will be adding a offset formula so that our range will always be dynamic and we'll never have to change the ranges in our pivot tables. And then step three will be to write a really simple macro that we can use and run and that will refresh all of the pivot tables so we won't have to go in individually and update those. So before we go into our three step process, it's probably important just to talk through how the offset formula works. Now, a lot of people find it intimidating, but it's really easy once you just break it down. So here on the left, what we're going to do is we're going to set a formula into cell D3. So if it equals offset and what we're going to do is we're going to firstly select this reference. So this is our first argument. So I'm going to select cell B3. And what we want to do is understand how many rows and how many columns do we need to move to get down to this cell here, which is in C8, which says winner. So the next argument then is our number of rows. So we need to move down one, two, three, four, five. So if I select five and then hit comma, and the number of columns we need to move is simply one to the right. And if I close my parentheses and hit return, you can see then that formula just tells me how many rows and how many columns do I need to select this particular cell. If this winner was on the left hand side, instead of using plus one, I could just use minus one. Well, that's all very well, but effectively for this example, what we need to do is we need to select a whole range. So I'm going to enter in this formula here into cell K3. So equals offset tab to that. This time my reference is going to be just the top left of my range here. So I select cell G3 comment to that we want zero on rows and we want zero on columns and the two arguments that we really need to use for ranges is the height and the width so what's the height of the range and what's the width of the range so our height will be just one two rows so I'll just select two to that and then comma and then our width is going to be one two three so I select three to that and close my parentheses there. Now what I have to do is I have to wrap that around a function that can deal with a range. So sum is a good option there. Open my parentheses and then close my parentheses and hit return. And you can see what it's done is it's summed up all of my range, which is effectively this data here. This video is part of my Office Hero series where I'll be using some Excel tips and tricks to help you get more done quicker and impress your work colleagues. Leave a comment in the description if you have a problem you can't solve and I'll see if I can try and help. So now that we're comfortable with our offset formula, we can blend that together with our named range and create our dynamic pivot ranges. So what we're gonna do is just select the name range by just control and F3 and then we just need to select new. What we're gonna do is I'm just gonna name this data and then just delete the, this existing data and just pop in my offset formula Now my first argument is going to be where do I want my range to start so that's going to be up in cell a1 comma to that now remember we need it as a range so for rows and columns we want a zero and then a zero and then we get to our height now because we want this dynamic I want to use a count a formula to count the instances where there's text in column a. So if I select count a, open up my parentheses and just select all of column a. What it will do is it will just specify how big it, that range is based on if there's text in it. So if I close that parentheses, comma, my next argument is going to be my width. So I'm going to use a count a formula again, and I'm going to select all of row one and that count a formula will just count how many instances of text there is in row one and specify the width of that range. If I close the parentheses and that count a, close the parentheses, 
on my offset formula and hit OK. And you can see that specified a new range called table data. So if I close that and what I need to do is I need to then drop in a new week's worth of sales. So if I just take my weeks two data and let's say if I just drop that to the bottom of the data that's already there. So copy that and just paste that to the bottom of my range here. So my new range is now 5,000 odd lines long. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a sum at the bottom of that range and sum all of that. Close my parentheses. So that's 4894, so 4,894,000. If I go into this pivot table here, what I'm going to do is just go up to pivot table analyze and then change source data. Now you can see this is the problem that I had is that at the moment it will just stop the range at 2000. So instead what I can do is I can just put in my new range and hit OK. And we can see then that's automatically summed all of the new rows dynamically. So that's my 4894 overall. So that's my step two done. So our final step is to just create a macro that will go in and refresh all of our pivot tables. So even though we've created a dynamic range that will change when each of the pivot tables is picking up the data, we have to individually go into each pivot table and refresh it. So instead of doing that, what we're going to do is create just a little macro. So to go into the VBA editor, we're going to use the shortcut key, which is Alt and F11. Now I've already got the code written in here and effectively what we've done is just declare two variables. So we've called WS as worksheet and PT as pivot table. If I go down to my step three before I go to my step two. So what this is, is a loop. So what it does is for each pivot table in each of these sheets. So in each of the worksheets, it will refresh this and then it will loop on to the next pivot table. So if there's three pivot tables in a worksheet, it will refresh each of those. And then this loop up here will say for each worksheet in this particular workbook. So once it's refreshed each pivot table in each sheet, it goes on to the next worksheet and then continues until it goes through all of the worksheets in the workbook. So to run that macro, all we need to do is just close down our VBA editor. We just go up to the ribbon within Excel, select developer, go across to the left to macro, and then you can see that macro name within there. So refresh pivot table. We'll just need to hit run to that and that'll refresh all the pivot tables. And you can just copy that code. It'll be down in the description below. Check out this video up here if you want to know more about Excel tips and tricks and this playlist down here if you want to know more about Excel formulae and functions. And don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one.